Hey folks, I'm Lance Eaton, and in this short session, we are going to talk about five tips for career preparation using generative AI. So what we're going to cover in here is what is it, how to use it for career opportunities, how to prompt, some specific prompts, and some considerations for use. Uh, and right below there is a link to a bunch of resources. It's going to include a bunch of prompts that we're going to explore in here. So anything you see on the screen, just know that you'll be able to find that in that link there, and it is also in the description below. So let's get started. So the first is just actually talking about what is generative AI. A lot of us have heard about it, others haven't, so let's dive into that. So the first thing to know is that it is a technology that produces text and audio and images uh, and video. It does this largely through uh, essentially crowdsourcing a vast, large database uh, that we will often call a large language model. Uh, and within that, it is using mathematical equations to anticipate what's within its database to think about how it responds to the question that's being asked. So it really is important that it, kind of, it responds to the kinds of input that a user provides. And this is when we talk about prompting, it'll become really important because in order for it to provide a good answer, you actually have to provide it a good initial input. Uh, you can't be general, you really do have to think about how to be specific here. And what's important to remember here is that it is not giving you a straightforward answer. It is not like when you talk to a friend and you say, how are you doing? They are giving you a informed answer that comes from their own self-awareness. Rather, what's happening here is you will provide a question or a prompt and it will use what I like to call advanced mathematics or mathing the hell out of it, uh, its data set in order to really predict or anticipate what the probable, and by probable, I mean mathematically probable right answer is. So it's always important to remember that it is not thinking in the same way that you or I think. Therefore, as we ask it questions, we always have to have that in mind, both in how we ask the questions and how we think about the results, because it isn't necessarily going to give accurate information. It's often going to uh, have what they call hallucinations. I don't like that term. That term feels like it's giving these tools a life of their own. And what it's really just doing is miscalculating. It is mispredicting. So always keep that in mind is that we do have to be really critical of the results because the results are about prediction and not about accuracy. Okay, so how might I or you use this for career opportunities? Let's take a look at that. So things we can think about. The first is that it can be really helpful in analyzing and determining your skills and abilities, right? Helping you figure out who and what you are as somebody in the world trying to do some kind of body of work, uh, pursuing some career. Like it's, it can be really used well to dig up those things, to unearth what's inside of you and ask you questions or uh, draw out information from content that you provide to get a better understanding of what it is uh, that's really deep in there that you have to offer. It also is really good at examining the expectations or needs of jobs and fields of work. One of the ways I describe this often, uh, what this is able to do, is it accesses the hidden curriculum of the world, right? So there's so many things around the job process from application to, uh, to the you know first screening call, to the interview, to your first day of work. There's all sorts of hidden things, things you don't know you're supposed to know or ways you're supposed to act or things that are said that you may think are one thing but are actually another. And so this is what I really like about uh, this tool is that if you use it effectively, if you use the right kind of inputs and the right kind of questions, it can actually so it can actually produce, it can actually give you some insights into uh, the jobs, the fields of work, the people that you're going to interact with in that industry. And where I like it the most, and, and what's most powerful here, is that it bridges that you know those skills and abilities that you're unearthing, and you can find ways of connecting that directly to the types of jobs and the fields of work that you want to do. So one of the questions that is often asked and that people are often working on is, 
okay, if it can do all of this, how do you do it? And a lot of this comes down to learning how to prompt well. Uh, when we say prompt, all that really means is figuring out the right information and context to give the generative AI tool sufficient ideas about what it is that you want. Uh, one thing to just remember, if you ask it basic, silly, vague questions, that's exactly what it's going to come up with. So if you say, write me a cover letter for a job in finance, it can do that. But what it spits out is going to be mediocre. It's going to be really just fluff. It's going to be something that anybody reading is going to just dismiss. And so the goal is not to use it to generate stuff in order to, say, uh, do the work for you, but to really work with you to refine what it is that you want to say. So how do we go about doing that? How to prompt well? Let's take a look. So the first thing you're going to start to learn as you play with it, as you interact with it, is you really have to think through what you want to ask it. Sometimes you might have it clear in your head, but when you type it in, uh, it doesn't, it isn't sufficient, right? There's lots of assumptions we often have with any question that we ask. There's, there's things that we are operating from, things that we already know so that we can ask that question. And what you have to think about is you really have to make this explicit when you ask a generative AI a particular question. So one of the things to think about here is, or one of the things that you'll notice is you will routinely have to both like ask it and then ask it again or ask it a different way or provide, like go back and forth and test out what questions work or how do you get better information. And this is the other piece. You want to make it an iterative space. Some folks, they go to a generative AI tool, they want to put in their prompt, get their output and feel like it's done. But the most powerful way to use generative AI is as an iterative tool, as a back and forth, as a, you're going to give it something, it's going to come up with a result. You're going to ask further questions or provide more prompts. You're going to dig into anything that it says to give you more detail, more, more specificity, more insight to what it is that you're trying to understand, you're trying to learn, you're trying to do, right? So always keep this in mind is that it is not the place you go for a simple question and answer. Um, that isn't going to help you, particularly in the job search and trying to connect your goals and your, your aspirations to the career that you want. So always think of it as, I'm not going here to just get the answer. I'm going here to actually engage in dialogue with this tool in order to get some deeper understandings and ways of talking about my work or connecting my, you know, my ideas and the things I want to do to the work that I want to do. And this is always really helpful that when you give it a prompt, you actually want to provide it with a role, a context, an action, and a format. And we'll look at this when we look at particular prompts, but think of it as this way. If you were, if you were applying for a particular job in a particular industry, right? Say you're really interested in uh, being a teacher, being a, being a elementary school teacher then what you want to do, if you're going to try to ask it to match up, say, your resume with uh, a your resume or your cover letter with a particular job application is you're going to say to the AI, OK, you are an expert in K through K through five teaching or elementary school teaching. Uh, what I want you to do is to review my resume. Right. So the first is you're telling it what it is, the action you're going to review my resume. You're also going to give it your resume then. So you get that's the context. This is the, the materials and then the format, kind of how you want that feedback. So you're going to say you are a elementary school teacher. I want you to review this resume and provide feedback in the form of a table of what areas of work does this resume need in what areas of work or, or what areas of this resume is it doing fantastic? Right, so you can ask it to put do it in an output of a table so it's nice and clear. You could ask it to, you know, rate your work, say, on a scale of 1 to 10, how is this resume, and provide examples of ways and why it is this or that. But really the best advice I can give you for any prompt that you're going to try is actually you start with this first prompt. This first prompt is... Uh, improve this prompt to maximize the creativity and analytical abilities of a large language model, colon, and then put in your prompt. So this sounds weird, right? Like, what am I saying here? What, I, what you want to do is when you first go to a generative AI tool and you're trying to start to get information from it, you want to take the text here that is in italics, that improve this prompt, 
And then after the colon, you want to put in your question. You want to put in your prompt. And so what you're saying to Generative AI, what you're saying to the tool is, hey, I want you to use your abilities to take this prompt that I have and make it better so that when I use it, it will get more information out of you. Right? And this is a little kind of like meta. This is a little kind of like, wow, what? What you're trying to do is use the tool to help you get a better prompt that will then get more information from the tool. And it's really powerful. It's really helpful for folks to uh, be doing this. Okay, so let's actually take a look at some specific prompts to try out. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go through the prompts and then we are going to hop over to a couple different tools to see what it looks like to use those prompts. So let's get started. This first prompt is cover letter assistance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say to the, to the generative AI, I'm going to say, you're an expert uh, cover letter writer, right? I'm giving it a very specific role in a particular field. And you can put in whatever your field, whatever your discipline, whatever your you know, industry you want, to work, you want to work in. And then from there, you're going to say, I am applying for a job as, and put in the job title uh, and organization. Say, I would like you to interview me to elicit experiences, work, and professional skills that are important to the job description below. And so you're going to want to copy and paste in the, the job description as part of this prompt. And then you're also saying, you will use my responses to craft a personalized cover letter that reflects my answers in the most thoughtful, effective, and thoughtful manner. Ask one question at a time and allow me to respond to that question. Ask follow-up questions if need for clarification. So what you're doing here is you're saying, hey, you're an expert in this. I'm applying for this job. Here is the job summary. I want you, meaning the AI, to interview me and ask me specific questions that help get at the, the root of why I think I'm in, I'm, I could do this job. And so then you're having the generative AI interview you, help you generate things that it's then going to give you a recommendation for a cover letter, right? So it isn't write me a cover letter, it's interview me and help me figure out what are the things I want to say in relation to this job. Let's talk about using it as a career coach. So in this case, you're framing it as your career coach, uh, particularly helping students figure out how to leverage their current skills and abilities to pivot in a new direction that they're excited about. In this situation, you are interviewing me. And then again, here, you provide the context about what it is you want to do, um, how you want to, you know, what is this change? What is this direction you want to go into? And then you're giving it further direction of like, help me figure out what are real possibilities for me to pursue a career upon graduation. And again, you're telling it how to do this. Ask one question at a time to determine uh, and use those answers to determine the next question to ask. And then again, some additional information about what you want that output to be. So this may look complicated. And again, this prompt is in the resources in, uh, in the description below. But this is really you giving it like, here's what I want, here's what I want you to help me with. All right, one more job questions. So say you have an upcoming job interview, right? And you're trying to think about, well, what are the questions I'm going to, I'm going to get? And so this one, it's job questions. Ask, ask as, sorry, act as an expert in job interviewing and in, and again, here you identify what the industry is, what the job you're applying for, etc. Uh, you're about to interview somebody for the position. Uh, the job, the job includes the following description. So you include the description and then you're saying to it, provide a list of 20 distinct and significant questions that might come up in the interview. Rate each question on a 10 scale of its likeliness to be asked with one being not likely at all and 10 being definitely asked. And then for each question, provide an explanation of why the question would be asked and what might uh, be two to three points to highlight in one's answer. The output should be in the form uh, of a table, right? So here, what you're doing is say you have an interview and you're not sure what kind of questions you're going to be asked. This is a way you can start to get at those questions. So let's take a look at what these prompts look like as we get into an AI. All right. So we are looking at perplexity. That is perplexity.ai. This is one of those AI tools that you do not use, need an account. Uh, though if you're going to use one of these regularly, I do recommend an account so you can keep track of your threads, like the different questions that you ask. And as I said, uh, as I mentioned elsewhere, you'll want to kind of have that. Keeping a track is really helpful for yourself.
So here's what I've done. I have, I'm doing that expert cover letter. Uh, and in this case, I'm using my own job. So I work in instructional design and faculty development. So I'm putting in that and I'm applying for a job. I'm putting in my job. So you get a sense of, or at least I get a sense of, you know, how useful is this? Um, so I provide the additional information. I provide the job description. And so once it's all in there, I'm just going to hit enter. And so I've added all the information and it starts right off and it says thank you for providing me the job description can you tell me about your background in instructional design experience so it's now turning into that interview it's going to ask me a bunch of questions and i can write up the answers uh for some reason i don't like this response i can ask it to rewrite it um, so yeah really simple clear easy to do let's go over to claude so Claude is very similar to these other tools. You do need an account to use Claude. Uh, and in this case, I have asked it to be that career coach. So here I am, I'm saying, you're an expert career coach and helping folks figure out their way. Uh, here's what I want you to do. Ask me one question at a time and let's get started. All right, so this is that second prompt that I showed. And so it takes that information in and it just starts off with, well, what is your major area of study? So I'm gonna say, uh, organizational leadership and change and so yeah now it's just going to start to ask me questions and I can respond I can ask it to tell it I can tell it to ask me something else I can tell it to ask me in a different way I can say I don't understand that question ask me again see now it's further elaborated so just always remember that too. Whatever it gives you, you can always ask for more detailed clarification and stuff. So that's Claude, that's that second one. And now we're at ChatGPT. This is one of the more popular ones, uh, one of the most popular ones. And most recently it has allowed you now, you can use it without creating an account. So you can definitely go in there and start to play around. Uh, and so in this case, I am actually telling it, you know, using that uh, job interviewing and I want it to give me questions uh, about this role. And again, I'm using my role and I want it to give me just a set of questions. So let's take a look at its output. I'm going to hit enter and it's going to, as you can see, it's moving through those questions. So the first is, you know, can you describe your experience with online education and digital pedagogy? It explains why this question, it tells me some things to highlight and it's just going to go through and keep asking. And I can always add, um, ask, 10 entirely new questions. So we're going to let this run for a second. I'm going to pause it so uh, we're not just watching the screen. So now we have our 10 questions. It's given us these ratings, a lot of great information here. And another cool step here is I could actually take one of these questions and say, I'm going to answer this question, uh, provide me feedback on my answer. So just know you can continue to play around with it and find different ways of asking and playing with it. There's, there's some real fun and creativity in being able to do that. All right, so let's go back to the slides and our final tip. Okay, let's talk about considerations for appropriate use. And this is really important. We are, these tools are gonna to become fairly ubiquitous quite fast and they can be really valuable and they can also create a lot of problems for how, in how we use them, particularly in the pursuit of opportunities and jobs and when we show up to those jobs and try to use them in certain ways. So thinking about using it properly, one of the first things I like to do is think about what are the questions I want to have in the back of my head as I'm using it. The first is, how does this AI output actually reflect me? Where does it not properly reflect who I am? Right? We want to remember that it can't be us um, in anything that it produces. We really want to make sure it is reflecting who I am. It can reflect the best version of me. Absolutely. That's what we're often doing when applying for jobs and doing interviews and stuff. But it can't. we can't have it say things that don't represent who we are. That's going to create problems for us throughout this. Another way of thinking about this is how accurate is the content of this output and how can I verify or validate what it is saying? Uh, in this way, you want to keep track of how you're using it. You want to keep track of what it is saying and 
can you validate that? Now, some things that are about you, you absolutely can validate. But when it's talking about an industry you're interested in, are you sure you know well enough about what it's saying to know that that's true? Uh, as we said, the they can calculate false answers. They can calculate things that are not true. And you want to be really careful. You need to bring that critical eye to engage with the tool and make sure it is actually reflecting what it is, uh, that, it's, that that is what it is saying, is actually true. Otherwise, it's going to just set you up to not really succeed. And then I really like this one is, would a friend or colleague recognize you in the output? So if you have it help you craft your cover letter, does your friend or colleague still can still read that and say, oh yeah, that's definitely you? Are they saying like, hmm, nope, doesn't sound like you, doesn't really resonate with the person who I understand you to be? Really consider what it means to use this tool, to not use this tool, and have others help you in that, right? Have others make sure that you're not just using it and appreciating what it can do, but not realizing what it's not doing or, you know, the ways it's misrepresenting. So at the end, it really is important that as you use these tools, you're bringing that critical insight, you're bringing that critical lens, uh, and being very, very intentional in how you use this tool. It absolutely can be really helpful, help you unearth things about yourself and how you use that to connect to jobs and uh, answer questions as you're going through that process of job searching and interviewing, but you really want to just be thoughtful about how you use it. So those are the five tips. I hope this is really helpful. Uh, please throw questions down in the comments below. If you really like this, give it a thumbs up, you know, uh, share it with others. If you're looking for other types of topics, please let me know. Uh, I really enjoy these and people seem to be also enjoying them. So thank you so much.